Welcome to another episode of Artificial Idiocy, where we talk about all things gaming. As people who game just a bit too much, I'm Atobe Sama. I'm Raceland Hawk. And I'm Kwanstein. And here's what we have to say on this episode of Artificial Idiocy. Oh really? Uh, we could do that too, yeah. Always meant to be talking about that, but that's gotta be like a big thing, not like the oh it's gonna be tacked on now. Right, well we does that's, that's... I'm thinking this may be the most spectacular fifteen minutes ever and we, <laughs> we would just use this. <laughs> We've talked about like every time we talk we end up like talking about everything else. It's just not recorded, so trying to get to like okay just record everything and then like It's see. cool, you know, I will I'll skip around with the editing, you know, like whenever you guys or on topic, I'll just cut that out and then put it right. in. Uh, <laughs> when yes, you're sir. off topic, I'll just be like, skip this. Some nope. of the other stuff might be fun, we'll see. Alright, so I guess that's where we'll go. Um, so we're just going to talk about professional reviews, whether they matter nowadays because of the whole internet craze where any user can actually write their own reviews and if they're actually helpful for consumers and the like. Um, so, what do you think? Do you, do you think professional reviews matter these days? I think yes, but in a different way than most other mediums. Uh, if you take a look at film, particularly, um, you have uh, you have a personality-based review. You mm-hmm. have uh, Roger Ebert. You have Peter Travers. Right. You have the names you can tack on to the credits just as a person. Whereas gaming, if, you, if the individual is shirked for a group, uh, an, an anonymous kind of group like Gamespot or IGN, and at that point you see on the reviews it's IGN.com, not a specific person. Yeah. And I think that still matters. Um, I think people will always look to someone that pretends to be professional and take and take leaves out of their out of their book. But in terms of gaming, I think it's definitely less uh, less of, of less importance than something like film or music or television. Well, I mean, I don't know. To me personally, like a review, professional review, I don't even care about professional music or movie reviews because you know they're they're less of an investment i go to a movie it's nine bucks i watch it i don't like it or like it whatever but like games are like sixty dollars so i end up you know actually like taking reviews pretty seriously because professional game reviews are different because they're they're more category they actually you know put down graphics sound story and you know they, they're very formulaic sometimes you don't really see that in like a movie review you know you know what i'm saying Oh yeah, it's difficult. It's more difficult to section off a film like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you would have acting, you would have soundtrack, and it it just doesn't work as well as a game yeah. in which there's many individual components that you can easily distinguish. Whereas a film, it's a more unified experience. But I definitely agree that at sixty dollars, there's definitely an inclination to research games beforehand. Mm-hmm. But then again, I mean, you also have the the new cons- uh, the consumer base that doesn't even look at a game before they go into a game store and buys impulsively. Right, right. Well, I, I think I read a recent study that uh, said, like, the the most reliable thing that consumers rely on is actually word of mouth and secondhand experience with their, like, if their friend bought the game. And then, like, professional reviews rated as, like, the last place of reliance. Interesting. I mean, was that a specific consumer market or was that just a general kind of poll? Yeah, it was just like, well, you know, they can't really do that, that incredible poll these days but it was just like a internet poll it, it asks like I think it was either 10,000 or 5,000 uh, people that were surveyed I think I saw that on either Kotaku or some other site because I mean when you're basing on purchases on professional reviews I don't think it's, it's as impactful as you know if you actually see the game in front of you because of your friends playing it you know what I'm yeah, it's a more of a it's a more of a sole sort of recommendation as opposed to just reading some dude's opinion on it. Yeah, I don't know. I told me someone. What, what do you think? Yeah, no, I'm silent over here because I'm still trying to figure out what the topic was. Oh, <laughs> like you're talking about reviews, but it kind of started. Okay, reviews like professional reviews versus like a user review or something. My whole take on reviews is like 
you know, what you should actually put on a review. I mean, like how you should be looking at it, looking at this game compared to other games, because everyone's always, you know, oh, so like, you, do every, you think... review, every review says, oh, well, it's no Halo. Well, do you, so you think there should be less comparative apo- approach to reviews? Is that where you're getting at? Or? Yeah, I just want a review to say, you know, this is what the game is trying to do. Like, this is how well it did it. It's like, and, you know, if they're going to give, if they're going to say something about how they think the game's, like, impacted overall by how well it had done something, you know, one of its, like, major goals, like how well it carried that out, mm-hmm. if you want to say something about it, then that's an opinion. You know, yes, each review is going to be, like, someone's opinion, but Absolutely. I don't need just the opinions. I need, I need, like, okay, what is this game doing differently? How well is it doing it? You know, I don't, and, you know, the score is an opinion. It's like, oh, that's comparing it. But it's like, no, I just want to have this game is in itself. Like, okay, so what are the high points of this game? Does it, does it really matter that it's missing something that, like, and, some and, game and, has? And you feel like regular, the reviews these days aren't doing that? Like, oh, some places. We, we always bring up IGN because I like their reviews. It's pretty much the only ones, like, I'm reading now. <laughs> I, th- I probably Escape it, uh, Escapist magazine does um, a pretty decent re- uh, reviews. Uh, but in terms of non-comparative reviews, I think Adobe, you're kind of breaching a topic between ideals and mm-hmm. what consumers like. Because if you don't, um, could, if you don't compare, like if I were to do a any comparison of uh, any review of a shooter without any comparison, every comment's going to be like, "But is it is it as good as Halo? Is it <laughs> Call of Duty? I mean, this is what consumers want, regardless of how, how what's better." And uh, what uh, what consumers want are very very basic. Just um, give yeah. me a compare compass. They um, top, you know put it in a top ten list somewhere, or ju- just give me uh, just give me it in a in a list format, bullet points. Um, I'd like to see it as well. I'm definitely in your boat. I just don't think it's the method to get the most views, which is what any reviewer right. is after. 